Hi everyone. So I'd like to run through an example problem uh, using a Mohr circle in order to evaluate a state of stress uh, against our failure theories and how that works together. So I've got uh, the start of an example um, drawn up here and basically the starting point for this problem is that there is a, a stress element. We've already figured out what the state of stress is so you can see there's a, uh, a 40 megapascal um, load uh, being applied on the top and bottom surfaces uh, in compression and 80 megapascal normal load in tension on the left and right and then a shear load uh, shear stress excuse me of 25 megapascals and we know something about our material properties as well so we can see here that we have a yield strength of 250 megapascals and we know that our material is a ductile material and the fact that it's a ductile material basically tells us what type of failure theory uh, we want to compare this against so uh, two options from what we've talked about one would be the max shear stress theory and then the other would be the max distortion energy theory and i'm actually going to evaluate it on the basis of of both in order to um, kind of show how they compare and so i would start by drawing my more circle so i'll get a an axis here which is a normal stress shear stress axis and we're going to locate our current stress element uh, on this more circle so we have one side that corresponds to uh, a positive 80 megapascals of normal stress and by sign convention a negative uh, 25 megapascals uh, so let's see i'll just roughly one two three four one and five so this point here corresponds to 80 and negative 25 and my second point which represents the top and bottom sides of my stress element uh, has a compressive 40 uh, normal stress and a positive 25 by sign convention so one two one and plus and so my second point out here uh, represents negative 40 and 25 there and so i can really based on my drawing skills, rough sketch in the circle uh, to locate something like that. And now I can start doing some calculations to better understand my, my complete Mohr circle. So the first thing I'd like to do is locate the center via the average normal stress. So that is 80 plus a negative 40 for two gives me 20 megapascals and so that tells me that the center of my Mohr circle is here at 20 and I can calculate the radius of my Mohr circle using my equation 80 minus negative 40 squared and my shear stress squared and this comes out to be 65 megapascals and so that tells me the radius of my circle and I already I just calculated the center of my circle and so of course what that means is that my principal stress uh, is the summation of those two so 65 plus 20 is 85 megapascals that's out here and my second principal stress is the subtraction so the center 20 minus 65 gives me minus 45 megapascals which if i drew this better would be more clear but out here so i've got my principal stresses and now i'm going to then apply my my failure theory so under max shear stress theory I have a safety factor of sigma y 
over sigma 1 minus sigma 2 magnitude. And my sigma y was given as 250. And therefore, I end up with 1.92 as my predicted safety factor. Under max distortion energy theory, I need to calculate the equivalent stress, sometimes called von Mises stress, and this is sigma 1 squared plus sigma 2 squared minus sigma 1 and sigma 2, all under a square root, and that then equals 85 squared plus negative 45 squared and that equals 114.3 megapascals. And finally the safety factor under max distortion energy theory is the comparison of that yield to that equivalent stress and I get 250 over 114.3 or 2.187 and so comparing these two the max distortion energy theory uh, predicts a higher safety factor than the max shear stress theory and so a higher safety factor means less likely to fail in the given circumstances and that's consistent with what we expect. So the max distortion energy theory is more accurate as a methodology. The max shear stress theory is more conservative, meaning that it will predict failure earlier than the max distortion energy theory. So it makes up for accuracy with being more conservative and predicting failure earlier. You'd rather be on that side right than on the other side of predicting, uh, not predicting failure when something actually does fail. All right, thank you.